Coffeezilla. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> Brian Rose. <laughs> we are going to talk about Brian Rose. So we're going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting in this piece because we've got to update people, let them know what's been going on. I mean, the big news is Brian Rose is running for London mayor. If you live in London, you'll have seen these posters everywhere. And I have to give you props, man, because you've been covering this a lot more closely. I've kind of tried to steer away from Brian Rose for a while, but he is the grift that keeps on giving. And we're going to go back and explain. It's such an amazing story. And you you also named that he was going to have a political career. So I want to give you some props for that. Um, should we bring people up to date on where we're at now? Sure. Yeah. And uh, and thank you. I, I Listen, it's a joy to follow Brian Rose because truly I'm uh, I regularly traffic in like sort of like the clowns, the the people who are sort of absurd characters of trying to take money from people. And Brian is definitely um, on the far end of that spectrum in terms of the willingness, his willingness to go the extra mile to take your money. So, yeah, to bring people up to speed, I first noticed Brian Rose and many people did when um, COVID had sort of first hit. He had done a video with David Icke. That video had gotten banned. He then went and he said, okay, well, I'm going to crowdfund this next episode. So he started this crowdfunding campaign for the Digital Freedom Platform. And he actually surprised himself because he had never crowdfunded it before. And he raised the money really quick, like in a day. He had set like a 30-day window and it was like a day. And so you could sort of see the wheels turning. And then he goes, oh, well, actually, I'll set up a phase two. Phase two is, you know, such and such. We have new goals. And then phase two is quickly met. Phase three. He ended up extending out a 100K donation drive into a million dollars and a two, quarter of a million dollars monthly recurring fee to his subscribe, which he was putting all on his subscribers. He said, you guys, which are all was it. interestingly, that was the thing that the, the straw that broke the camel's back of the, the goose that laid the golden egg. Correct. To mix two metaphors. Um, let's, let's recap all of that for people who maybe are new to this, but let's start by talking a little bit about the London mayor bid because he's brought all of his, hopefully by the time this goes out, an article that I've written for unheard would have gone out as well. I've been writing the last few days. And in that, I kind of basically call him the ultimate post-truth candidate. Like he's definitely modeling himself on, I'd say, Donald Trump. Um, and I think you would as well. And he's trying to, like, what I love about Brian Rose is there's a, there's a Brian Rose reality bubble that he's trying to create by systematically faking all of these metrics of, of success like the views, the campaign, it, it's extraordinary. But so far, what's amazing is it has not worked in terms of intersecting with the real world. So that in, one, in one reality bubble, Brian says he is the second favorite and has been the second favorite. He's the only man who can beat Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London. And yet, if you look at the polls, he's not even at 1%. He's not even breaking out of the also rants. So these reality bubbles that are just completely separate it's it's extraordinary. And that was different from the Donald Trump thing, because Donald Trump kind of successfully parlayed himself into presidency, whereas Brian Rose seems to not have I, I, I don't know which of the gifts, but like he can't parlay this, you know, sort of he's less likable than Donald Trump. Oh, tremendous. Yes, absolutely. As you said, I mean, it was sort of built off of the start was, hey, I'm going to lie about being in second place, even though I paid off bookies or someone paid off bookies um, for him to get parlayed into second place. And then he said, let's yeah, clar let's clarify what we mean there by paid off bookies, because that sounds like bribery. What we're actually saying is it's very easy to change the odds in the bookmakers, because if you put enough money on a certain thing, the bookmakers will change the odds to kind of cover their losses just in case it happens. So what we, at the beginning, he was down to like three to one at some bookmakers before the polls had opened. And then he confirmed in a Times interview quite recently that he had actually put money on himself while claiming it wasn't enough to move the market. By definition, any bet will move the market. And so what a stupid claim to make. Now, my contention is that Brian did move the market. Um, and that's by definition true anyways, but, um, no, yeah, of course, of course he did. 
And then he goes, yeah, you can't trust any of the polls. But the polls all say what we all knew, which is that nobody knows who Brian Rose is. Nobody cares who Brian Rose is. Um, maybe you don't like Sadiq Khan, but then you go with like one of the other like viable candidates. But you're not going to go with Brian Rose. Um, nobody knows who he is. He's from California. He's a Californian trying to be the mayor of London. It's insane. Yeah, but he has a very impressive looking campaign in his own reality bubble. Glossy, bus, big adverts everywhere. And I know, like I live in East London and I haven't had a Brian Rose pamphlet through the door yet, but many of my other friends have. Um, and what I find extraordinary, so there's like whole Reddit threads now dedicated to bringing Brian Rose down. There's Facebook groups. There's a Reddit thread called That Bus Wanker, which I'm particularly fond of. And the, the tone on those is, is mostly he's, I can't believe he's still doing this. He's about to be found out. There's no way he can survive. There's no way that he can survive a whole election campaign without being found out, which is true, surely. Like it's, it's, a, it's the reason that I sort of stopped doing stuff about Brian Rose and also, I, had, I was going to write an article about him last year, and the decision in the end was, I don't really want to boost his signal, because why would you want to? Effectively, he, he, he thrives off the notoriety, and, and people kind of, like, any publicity is good publicity. So I kind of like, okay, I'm going to stop doing stuff about him. But now, like, going for public office is a significantly different thing. Like, it's, there's a whole different set of values and judgments of whether to call out someone. and also it's you can't expect not to be scrutinized like that's the amazing thing that i can't believe that he kind of thinks that he can play the same game that he's been playing for the last few years and it, it doesn't work with this amount of scrutiny yeah well here's a man that stands for nothing brian rose says he stands for free speech then he censors people within his digital freedom platform Brian Rose says he'll defend to the death your right to say something he disagrees with, and then he'll remove one of my videos or several of my videos for criticizing him, right? He says he stands for, you know, this, and then he goes against it over here. He's a, he's a man of, like, pure convenience. Like, wh whatever makes him look good at that exact moment is what he will do. Um, and then it's just, like, a series of lies from there. So when he got stopped on his he was doing like a battle bus campaign, right? Where he drove around London, but he wasn't following any of the COVID protocols. Like they were like, Hey, you've got to wear a mask. He wasn't wearing a mask. He's like going out, shaking people's hands. And then he gets stopped by the police and they're like, Hey, you can't do this. Like nobody can do this. And he goes, Oh, well it's political then. And you see the police woman be like, no, no, actually we would do this to anyone who is like out, out here randomly, no mask, like she grabbing people off the street. And then he goes, oh, well, I've been arrested. Well, no, Brian, you haven't been arrested. You've been fined. And then he went on and then he got a ticket for that. And then he said, well, now I have a criminal record. And he goes, no, Brian, that's like a speeding ticket. If you pay it, you don't have a criminal record. And so let's play the clip now of him saying that he's got a criminal record. So apparently now I have a criminal record. Yes, it's true. A lot of you have been outraged, angered and upset. That's astonishing. And I just put that claim to the campaign to say, why did he say you had a criminal record? And they base like it's, it's, it's a flat out lie. Like it's a complete lie. He does not have a criminal record. Yeah, he said he did, though, for sure. A hundred percent. He lied to people. This is my problem with Brian Rose is just like if you dig at any level into his claims, it's just like, oh, yeah, this is just a liar. He's just a liar trying to take people's money. And what makes me so upset is he's using things like free speech, people's political dissatisfaction, and going like, go with Brian, I'll be different. When it's transparent that he is the biggest grifter of them all. And so that's what my, uh, my coverage of Brian has been. It's just like exposing this gigantic narcissist and grifter for what he is, and then letting people make up their own mind. Because if, if you want to support Brian Rose after that, after realizing that, that's fine. But um, you should know that. You should have the, the access to that information. Yeah, and I wonder, there's a couple of other things I think it's worth flagging up. Well, interestingly, a couple of days ago, one of his former guests, Dorian Yates, was due to do a Instagram Live with Brian. And then some people got in contact with Dorian Yates and said, can you please ask him about the digital freedom platform, what happened to that money, and also the courses that everyone um, and 
like this is another part of the story people don't know like so many people are upset with the quality of the courses basically saying they're scams there's 28 reviews on scam guard his entire inner circle turned against him and wrote him a letter in the summer like so dorian yates said to brian obviously behind the scenes i yes i'll come on and do an instagram live but i have to ask you about these things and brian refused hey what's up guys uh lovely sunny day here in spain um just giving a message to notify everybody uh that i was doing a instagram live uh this evening at six o'clock uh uk time seven o'clock spanish time with brian rose from london real of course i've been on brian's show a few times um and i had a lot of people contacting me about uh, the donations made to the freedom platform uh including a lot of uh, friends of mine that donated money there and they had a lot of questions they felt were not answered and also people were uh, uh, notifying me about brian's business course that they were not happy with and so on so uh I wanted to kind of br bring that up with Brian and have a chat with him on the call about that. And uh, he wasn't happy with that. He didn't want to do that. So um, we mutually decided to cancel the call because um, if my name's associated with Brian and London Real and things are going on that people are not happy with, and uh, some of those people are friends of mine, they donated money and they didn't feel that they're... Um, their questions were answered. So uh, as Brian's not willing to talk about that, he just wants to talk about his campaign for mayor, I didn't think um, it was wise to go ahead with the call um, and associate my name with something people are not happy with. And so Dorian Yates put out uh, a statement saying, I'm not going on with Brian anymore because he refused to talk about these things. At the same time that Brian is calling out Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, for not debating him, not talking to him. Like the it's it's completely shameless and hilarious. Like the, the other thing about Brian Rose is like he is he's the grift that gives on giving. Keeps on giving. <laughs> yeah. The grift love, that keeps on I giving. I love that saying. Well, also he won't debate me, which is the biggest outrage. Not Dorian, it's me. I have been talking about Brian forever, and I've said, look, come on my show. Please answer the people's questions. You've stolen people's money. Answer the people's question. And he refuses to. So when he comes on and goes, like, Sadiq Khan won't answer my question, you're not e even on Sadiq Khan's radar, buddy. But one of my videos about Brian Rose, people are tremendously interested. All his audience are interested. So his, that's another example of where it's convenient he'll be all interested. When it's convenient, he's Mr. Debate. I'm willing to have an open and free exchange of ideas. But then it's like, well, here's like this guy who's criticizing you very openly. Your audience agrees with a lot, a lot of what he says. And then he's nowhere to be found. He can't be bothered to, re, like, to respond. He doesn't know who that is, even though he'll go and you know claim my videos. So that's the thing about Brian. Uh that people need to know. I love that Dorian Yates did that. He's a real one for that. Yeah. Yeah. He got a lot of uh, props, I think, from people for that. Um, Is it worth also mentioning that um, that these the bookies that that uh, were like, you know, Brian Rose was bet into like three to one or whatever it was, they have come out publicly and said, this guy has absolutely zero chance of winning this this campaign, even they can't believe it. They think the whole thing's stupid. They say it's like one of the worst bets of political his, uh, history in the UK. And so I find it funny, like, where did that money come from? Number one, was it the donator's money from the digital freedom platform is the question I have to ask. And, you know, what's next after he loses? Because he will lose. And when he dies... What does that mean? What's the new grift? Because that's the thing about Brian is there will always be a new grift. What's it going to be though this time? Yeah, I really, I want to come back to that. Maybe let's end on that point. Like where does he go from here? Because I'm not sure there's, especially seeing that with the guests like Dorian Yates are now coming out. So anyone who says I'm going to do this thing with Brian is going to get, there's whole Reddit threads now dedicated to calling him out. So people are going to say, okay, there's a there's a Facebook Live with this person planned. Let this person know. So either he's going to have to start answering those questions or people are going to start doing what Dorian Yates done, has done and pull out. Like, I don't, I don't know where he goes from here. 
Um, but so one thing to say is like, we don't know, like, how is he funding this London mayor campaign? What we know is that Longstem Limited, the company behind London Real, was doing extremely badly a couple of years ago. The last accounts filed at Companies House show it was seriously in debt. The digital freedom platform was this massive success. I sent in a question to his press person asking whether any of the money from the digital freedom platform was used for the mayoral bid. He says no. So let's get that on the record. He says no. If anyone else knows any different, then I'm sure they will be able to find out how to get in contact with us. Um, but it is an absolutely fascinating what and the other part of it is that he was basically going down hard with his own audience. Like he had the digital freedom platform that he kept adding new um new goals to him as kind of get, getting more and more money. And then when he called for the running cost, 250000 a, a month, that's when it sort of his audience turned. And then we last time we spoke was after someone using the London Real account, which I'm told was definitely Brian Rose, was arguing, was getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat with his own audience in his comments threads. Well, famously, you didn't donate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you didn't donate. So like donate. He, was, oh, he was done. Like that was, the, that was how I felt like at this right. time when we last spoke was like right. he was done in terms of his YouTube audience. Right. Well, and he is. I mean, no one's really watching his videos. That's the thing is that that's the like thing about it. His view, videos get like a thousand views a video unless he's like throwing a ton of money with ads at them. Um, but this whole thing about like, oh, no, I'm not using any of the funds for the mayoral race. Let's be clear here. When you go to London or uh, digitalfreedomplatform.com slash donate, it will redirect you to the donation page of Brian for mayor. Um, so the question is, where are those recurring costs that they were raking in? Where are those going? If not to the digital freedom platform, because clearly that's not uh, going on anymore. He's got this new thing. That's where the new donations are being funneled to. So I have to ask. Mm. Yeah. So the digital freedom platform, which we covered back in the day, was started off as a daily motion plugin inside the, the London Real website and is still just a plugin to the London Real website next to all of the ads for the courses. So he gets people onto kind of his prime real estate. I do have to say that Brian's press team have told me that they are in the process of spinning off the digital freedom platform as a separate entity, which I'm sure will happen. Oh yeah. Um, and also the other things that he claimed to be raising money for blockchain technology, which was kind of like what? And and taking the big tech companies to court as well. That was the that was why he was raising the money. He's gonna he's gonna defeat Google, Facebook, and Twitter with two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's a that's a viable path, guys. And here's the thing. Here's what I hate. When you when Br someone like Brian Rose crops up, we're we're not saying oh well, we don't think these big tech you know people have something to answer for. We're not saying. Hey, we don't like free speech. No, this man is grifting on these values, taking people's money, and that money then just kind of vanishes into the black hole of Brian's battle butt. Like, we have no idea where the money is. And so that's what gets me interested is not like, I, I do think there are legitimate concerns here, but this is just not what Brian's worried about either. That's my point. Yeah, I think that was, that was certainly why I got interested in it early in the summer is that like freedom of speech means something like it is a sacred value. And then to, for people to basically be exploiting it and making money off it in such a dubious way is yeah, it feels personal in such a transparently self-centered way, because then when Brian is criticized, then it's like the whole social media censorship team comes out of the woodwork to all of a sudden redefine what free speech means, apparently. And so uh, that's what I find so funny about like Brian Rose's whole thing about like there needs to be a third party of London. Yeah. And I mean, the, the good thing so far is it does seem that London is pretty immune to Brian Rose's charms. Um, like I, the, the hilarious thing about it is that I could not imagine a less. A less suitable candidate or a less suitable personality type for the British. Like it, it's hilarious that he basically wraps himself in the British flag, calls himself London Real, and hilarious and also kind of really out of order 
that he's basically taking a lot of the credibility of the British brand for someone who is completely alien to it. Like any self-respecting British person looks at him and just thinks, what a wanker. What a total wanker. Like my friend, my friend who I um, saw the other day who had the pamphlet come through the door said, I, she didn't know his name. I said, I just described him. And she's like, oh, yeah, I saw that pamphlet the other day. I went straight in the recycling. I thought, what a wanker. Just by looking at, just by looking at the guy. And it's, I do hope that we move from the kind of outrage to the derision phase of, of Brian Rose, because that's kind of what he. That's where I've been for the last six months is pure derision towards Brian Rose because, um, oh, he absolutely deserves it. This is a man who's, you really should play that nunchuck clip at some point. <laughs> But this is a man who has like no self-awareness, who has been grifting from the beginning, who does not care about any of the values he says he espouses. And like the guy has absolutely no shame. And I'm a little bit tired of that. Yeah, yeah, I know the feeling. And I'd, I'd just like to read, to go back to the piece that we put a flag in before about where he goes from here. Because I'm, I mean, it's very easy to kind of think, well, he's, he's had a grift so far, so we'll have another grift. But I do wonder if he's, I, I just wonder where, where he can go because I thought there was an opportunity to have a sort of more spiritual-esque version of something like Infowars that he was playing with earlier in the pandemic. And I thought there was a real opportunity there, like when he was bringing on all of these sort of COVID denialists, kind of anti-vax voices, whether or not they have a point, there was definitely a demographic for it. But he, I think he he just felt like that was, was too down, down um, market for him, and so he wanted something more. And then he went, and then he went for the London mayor thing. And I just don't see, I don't see where he goes because he's destroyed his reputation with anyone who might come on London Real now. Anyone with a publicist or is able to Google will know what he's up to, know who he is. So I just don't see, I don't see where he goes. There'll be some people who are watching the mayoral campaign will find London real and will sign up for the courses, but they weren't doing particularly well either. The conspiracy people are massively suspicious of him anyway. So I just I I I don't see a I don't see a plan. I'm always impressed by um, people's ability to pivot into like even wilder, you know, new grips. But I have to agree with you that one thing that Brian has tarnished is his believability when he says, like, I believe in this. I believe in such and such. Uh, because, you know, say what you want about David Icke or Alex Jones, but you, most people really think they believe that. Like, they may, you may think they're wrong, but their followers, and even myself, like, I believe they believe that. And in a way that lends them a kind of, like, uh, cr credibility I, I, of, of a sort, like a weird type of like, at least I know you stand for what you stand for. With Brian Rose, none of that exists. Like anything he says, my th immediate thought is like, okay, where's the money? Like, obviously there must be money Brian sends to somewhere to try to get someone to donate. Where are the donations coming from? Um, so that's, that's the thing about him where he's sort of lost the ability to credibly say like, I believe in this. This is my movement. It's like, no, you've had like six movements and you've abandoned them at the first sign of trouble. So what, what does Brian Rose stand for? We may never know, maybe donations above all, but um, I do think that it, it will be tough for him to just jump immediately onto some other bandwagon because people, I think, will just go like, well, look what he did over here. Look what he did over here. And there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about because you know so much more about this kind of ecosystem. So he's now posting the videos with Tika Tiwari, who is this sort of Bitcoin expert, pay, pay him to tell you which coins to invest in. But Tika Tiwari is banned as a broker in the, in the US. There's this kind of network. I'd, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, what are these sort of little networks that, that are sort of full of these sort of dodgy business people and um, borderline I mean, would you call them scams or is that too, too extreme? Um, so what they are is they're like these newsletter salesmen who call themselves like, 
you know, I'm a guru of X or Y, or like, I'm the guy who predicted this or that. And you dig in and they didn't predict anything at all. Um, and, but you find these in penny stocks, you find them in crypto, uh, how they make their money just for anyone wondering is not by being right. It's by convincing you that they have some new secret that will make you rich. And ironically, you believing that they will make you rich is what makes them rich. And that's the whole bait and switch of it all. Tika Tuari is just one of these guys, but I believe he works for Agora, one of the largest um, newsletter publishers in the world, and especially America. I believe Brian Rose has also joined or some new newsletter as well. But what these people do is they just like pump out these subscription newsletters, basically promising the world and delivering coal, basically. Uh so yeah, what a what a complete disaster and how emblematic of Brian's brand that he would go immediately sell out his audience to the, you know, nearest guy with some crypto, you know, five coins to five million. Or I think now it's like coins to one trillion dollars or something like that. Um so it completely insane, but of course it is, right? And also, which is very dodgy. He seems to be deleting those videos after a while. Like he'll release those videos and then he'll delete the earlier. Right. You pump them to your audience and then you delete them when convenient. Yeah. That's what he does all the time. Well, yeah. Cause he's, he's only doing it because he's selling them something. And then when, cause he doesn't actually believe in Tika or at least, um, the reason he's doing it is not because he cares so much about Tika and he's trying to provide value to his audience. The reason he's platforming Tika is because he makes money from doing that. So when it's, Stops making him money. Get rid of the evidence. And how do we know that he's making money from it? Apart from that he wouldn't so, do LOA otherwise. So, so this is the back end deals of how you sell out email lists. The reason is because um, when you have featured email lists, it's much like a sponsorship read, right? Like if you go and you go, hey, the, use code XYZ at checkout. Uh, use code um, wisdom at checkout for Squarespace. We may not know the exact deal you have made with Squarespace, but there is a deal there, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be using a code or something. So when you look at his emails, the links, their affiliate links, their links, um, and their specific emails that are his list is being sold to Tika Tuari's list. So they're like selling Tika Tuari on his email list. That's all, it's sponsored emails. It's like classic, uh, a classic way to kind of bring in some extra revenue. So the question is, did he make an upfront fee or is he making money on the kickbacks? Yeah. No, the reason I asked that is that that was one of the other questions that I asked to his press person, what was the financial deal with Tika Tawari? And the response was, he's appeared as a guest on London Real. And that was it. Which is obviously not the full story. Yeah. Why would he go sell the guy's product? Who's ever heard of such a thing? The amount of lot like just like bald faced lying that we're seeing here is insane because if I'm going out and I'm like, you know, giving you some sponsored coffee or something like that, I'm like, please go buy this. Why would I do that? Like, of course I would have some kind of deal. So if they're not disclosing that, that's terrible. Yeah. I'm beginning to suspect that Brian doesn't have a completely authentic relationship with the truth. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. Man, this has been fun as always. And you've been doing really valiant work keeping across all of the ups and downs of the, the Brian Rose story. So on behalf of everybody in London who now has the opportunity to see what happens over the next four weeks, which I think is going to be a long, long four weeks <laughs> for all of us. Um, but yeah, is there anything more that you want to say about? Oh, yes. I'll be live streaming the the election results of London. I didn't do the American ones, but somehow I'm more interested in the London election results than I ever was in America. So um, you can check that out at CoffeeZilla, the YouTube channel. But thanks for having me on. I appreciate you covering this as well. And you have, you've got a dog in this fight as well, haven't you? You're backing a candidate. I am actually. I didn't want to say. I wanted to hide my true, you know, true intentions here. And today, I'd like to announce my official endorsement for mayor of London. Take it away. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, that's.
that's the wrong clip. That's actually Brian Rose uh, going after Asian hate. <laughs> what I meant to do say is that I'm endorsing this man for mayor of London. My apologies. This London politics that is most respectable. This is Count Binface, and he's Brian's biggest competitor right now. It's a narcissist versus a literal bucket. And I wanted to say that uh, I'm for the bucket. I think it holds more water. I am back in Count Binface for mayor of London. I, I suspect my influence will be enough to move the polls. But the question is, can I surpass Sadiq Khan with that kind of massive influence that I have? We'll find out. I might get behind Binface as well. Maybe I could do an interview with Count Binface <laughs> and see whether I can push him over the... Push him over the edge. My real my real goal is to get him past Brian, actually, because I think a bucket being ahead of a narcissist is a fitting sort of in to Brian Rose. Awesome. Always a pleasure, man. Thanks. And keep up the good work. Thanks, David. The film you just watched was a conversation that happened in Rebel Wisdom's digital campfire. So to join conversations like this, to submit questions, stay for the after hours hangout to talk about the ideas in the films, and to practice and develop some of the skills we talk about on the channel, check out the membership options. There's three different levels of membership. Sensemakers get to join our regular Sensemaker Showcase events with some of the most interesting thinkers around. And also the monthly Wisdom Gym sessions where we speak to and also have a chance to work with some of the world's best teachers and facilitators. Explorers can join the Rebel Wisdom Book Club sessions, the monthly Philosophical Journey sessions, and also the regular Skills Academy to practice skills like mindfulness, sovereignty, and sense making. Also, Rebel Wisdom will be at the Inner State Festival in Albania in September, so check out the link below for details. And from now on, all members get to join our monthly AMA sessions with us, where you can ask any questions about anything to do with Rebel Wisdom.